Coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. You ain't had a drug that can do you like Jesus. You ain't had sex like when you get a hold of Jesus and he starts fulfilling you. You got to taste Jesus. You got to partake of him. Once you partake of him, he's no longer that little Jesus on your chain swapping around on your mirror. He becomes a living word. He becomes rhema. He becomes your all in all. He becomes your everything. There's something that comes up inside of you says, I'll never be the same. I've never had a relationship. I've never had a narcotic. I've never had an alcohol, drop of alcohol. Do me like Jesus and there's no side effects. That's what I love about Jesus. He blesses us without sorrow. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining us today here on Keys to Kingdom Living. We're bringing you a powerful message that began last week. So if you were not able to catch the first part today, and then I'll share with you at the end of this program how you can listen to the message in its entirety. The message that we're bringing forth is a very liberating, very challenging, but also a very rewarding word and I know that because I shared it with the congregation and we've recorded it for your edification and for instruction to the body of Christ. It is entitled, How to Walk Away from a Toxic Relationship. And you may be thinking, well, this is not for me. I've never been in a toxic relationship. The Lord knows how to come at a different way, thinking this is the way it's going to be, when in fact, it's something you may have never considered before. Get your faith up, open up the Word of God, and go with me as you listen to this final portion of How to Walk Away from a Toxic Relationship. As stuff starts happening in your lives, people start getting blessings, getting jobs, getting promotions, getting blessed, getting increased. They start getting vision. Why? Because the life of God is in this church, and the life makes anything alive grow. Can I get a witness? But... Once they start getting blessed, they think, well, that's pretty good. I got enough of God. I'm going to go do what I want to. And then that starts drying up on the vine because you're not abiding in the vine. God has so much more for this generation. We can't help those Jews that dies in the wilderness. We can't help those Christians that fall by the wayside because they chose self over God, but we can help a new generation that wants to go on into the promises of God, walk in the Spirit, and not fulfill the lust of the flesh so they can inherit the kingdom of God. When you inherit the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God comes upon you. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And when that comes upon you, you're walking in kingdom authority. Satan in hell knows your name. The demons in hell know your name. Can I get a witness? God's restoration power starts coming up on us. Watch this. Because you're walking in the anointing of God, you don't have to work near as much. It's the ways of a transgressor that are hard. The ways of a righteous, obedient son and daughter are easy because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. God has so much more in store for us, but we tie in his hands walking in the flesh, living according to the lust of the flesh. And God says, I have so much in store for you, and you're trying to live off the, the junk, the, the uh, what was that stuff? Junk food of Satan. Been away from it so long, I forgot what it was called. Is this what happened to you? In these verses where Isaiah is talking about the prophecy about the Messiah, God shows us how redemption from sin and the curse of sin operates. If we give God power over our will, he will give us a blessed life. There is an exchange between us and God. We're in covenant. He didn't tell us to go to the cross. He said, I will go myself. So it said Jesus, God in the flesh, came and laid himself on the cross and in that cross, it says, he who knew no sin became sin so that we 
could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus without going to the cross. That's awesome. That's a, that's a, a powerful exchange. We didn't have to go to the cross. We didn't have to get stripped naked, beaten to death, and hung up there for everybody to gawk at and mock at, right? We didn't have to go to the grave. We didn't have to go to hell. We didn't have to take on Satan. Jesus did all that. There's an exchange between us and God. If you give anything to God, you are putting him in a place, in a position, he has to give it back. The Bible says, I am a debtor to no man. That's what God said. So if you do something for him, it puts him in a place where he has to do something from you. Abraham, yes. Take now your son, your only son, up on a mountain which I will show you, and there offer him up to me. And so Abraham did exactly what God said. So it put God in a position. He had to give Abraham something that, that Abraham was willing to give up. God was going to have to give up something too. So when he got up there and he's ready to kill his son, God says, wait a minute. I see that you're going to obey me. The intent of your heart is right. I trust you. Now I can make a covenant with you that will last forever through my son. And here's a ram. You're missing it. He gave him a substitute. <laughs> when you don't walk for self, you don't live for self, God steps in with substitutionary. He says, I'll take that one for you. I'll, I'll, I'll remove that curse from you. I've already took that curse upon me. I took that stuff, that generation curse upon me. You don't have to live up under that. You've been living in poverty. I'm fixing to show you what it's like to have wealth in your bank account. I'm about to lose stuff on you. Your family has never walked in because they would not walk in my covenant. But if you ever give it up for God, it makes God have to give it up for you. Has anybody ever proved God, put him to the test, and what I'm preaching is the truth? Thank you. Put him to the test. I, I double dog dare you to put God to the test. Now, 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 terms and conditions apply. I see dealer for detail. Now, just because you say, all right, I'm all fired up about the sanctification process. Don't understand it, but I like what you say about the results of it, so I'm willing to do it. Well, don't think just because you put a little seed in the field, it's going to pop up and you're going to be rich overnight. Because he's got to deal with your P-R-I-D-E first. Lord, we planted you a church. Look at it. It's in trailers, but it's still a church. How are you going to bless us? Keep plowing, brother. Keep plowing, son. Look, look, it's growing. It's getting bigger. Keep plowing. What? You ain't even got to the suffering part. Just hold on. Because if you don't suffer with him, you're not going to reign with him. Don't you want to reign with him? I ain't talking about when you get up in heaven. I'm talking about right now. I don't do this for money. I don't even do this for y'all. I do it for God. Because y'all don't see anything hardly that I do. I'm like the IRS. I just show up every once in a while. <laughs> you don't know what they're doing. I'm trying to make y'all laugh at your expense. <laughs> but once that, that pride is dealt with and you're down to rock bottom, where God start building, then you're going to start seeing stuff turn around. You're going to start seeing people that used to walk over you come and humble themselves before you. You're going to start seeing situations that worked against you now start working for you. Everything in Christ Jesus, will be, uh, he will cause it to start working for you even though they're against you. I love that. These light afflictions, which are but for a moment, are working for us. Even God is using light afflictions, these light afflictions. You have to hand it to Paul. Stone, not with drugs, rocks. Old school stone. <laughs> Beaten. <laughs> Shipwrecked. Snake bitten. Beaten, thrown in prison. And he calls them light afflictions. But for a moment, you ever had a toothache? It's like it's eternity. And it always happens at night. The devil is a liar. Why can't we get 24 hours, seven, 
uh, dentists like we do preachers. <laughs> you got to endure for the night because you know joy's coming in the morning as soon as they give you that Novocaine. Oh, sweet Jesus. Thank God for Novocaine. Can I get a witness? Yes, yes. But once you hit rock bottom, then God will start establishing you. Then he'll start building through you and in you at the same time. That's, it's funny how God works. He'll be working in us and working through us at the same time. That's how God works. He's a multiplicity God. He's multitasking like women. He made y'all. You're welcome. <laughs> I thought y'all would be touched by that, but oh well. John 19, I mean John, Genesis 19, verse 24. Get back to the message. So Lot has decided to split up with Abraham, which was supposed to happen years and years before, but Abraham wouldn't let that toxic relationship go. Come out from your father's country, away from your kindred, to a land that I will show you. And he never would let that toxic relationship with Lot go. But one day, he says, uh, our herdsmen are striving. We don't need this in our family, so let's divide the land. So Abraham, being the good uncle he was, says, you pick the one you want, and I'll take whatever's left that you don't want. And so Lot picks the plains where Sodom and Gomorrah are. They, he goes down there and raises his family in this perverted place. And so God tells uh, Abraham, uh, who has a, a right relationship with God, says, I'm going to destroy the place where your nephew is. And so he says, please don't destroy that place. And so God says, all right, if there's ten there, I'll spare it. Couldn't find ten. So he says, I'm going to send my angels to go get Lot out his wife and we pick it up verse 24 he's going to destroy it with brimstone and fire upon the inhabitants of the plains and verse 24 then the lord rained brimstone and fire on sodom and gomorrah and the lord from the lord out of the heavens so he overthrew those cities all the plain all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground excuse me but Lot's wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. I've, I've always wondered why she turned into a pillar of salt. I finally got a hold of somebody that knows physics. When, when fire and brimstone is falling, it's so, the heat is so intense, it vaporizes stuff. It takes it down and reduces it to its lowest molecules. She turned into salt, y'all. That's how intense the heat was. But she stood there long enough to look back and would not turn back around until that caught her. She couldn't let go of what was in her past. God has a work he's going to do in the earth. And he's saying, I'm calling y'all out. I'm calling you out of the, the lust of the eyes, out of the lust of the flesh, out of the pride of life. I'm calling you out of the ways and the pleasures of the world. Come out from among them. Be ye separate. Touch what is unclean. Touch not what is unclean. And I will receive you. That's what God's offering us. He's going to receive us unto himself. Then we will be called his sons and daughters, and he'll be called our heavenly father. Lot's wife was given the exact same opportunity to be delivered from destruction that had fallen upon Sodom and Gomorrah that Lot was given. They were both given the same opportunity, right? Two shall be working together. One shall be taken and one shall be left behind. But she loved what was in her past more than what was God was offering her in her future. And a lot of people are stuck right now in that same place. God's calling them. They know fire's falling. They know it's getting darker and better. But they're not coming. They're stuck. This is a perfect example of what happens to people when they love Jesus, but they love the world more. She was literally fleeing for her life. She had it made, y'all, and was getting closer and closer to safety. But something happened in her heart, and she stopped. For a moment, I don't know how long that moment was, but she stopped to look back. And, and watch this. For one look, say one look. For one look, 
How long do you think that look lasted? Let's say it lasted for 100 years. She stood there for 100 years and, and looked and gazed upon what was being destroyed. The ashes. I'll give you beauty for ashes. For that look, she gave up her life. But she gave up her life for something that was already destroyed. <laughs> We're giving up our lives for something that is already destroyed by Satan. If I don't wake you up, I don't know what will. When we look back through the power of our lust at the things sin has destroyed and longing them, we are forfeiting the life, the liberty, and the blessings that God is offering to us as his children. By looking back, by going back, look at how evil and perverse the world is becoming. Yet millions of believers around the world refuse to forsake the pleasures of this world so that they can receive the blessings that God has for them, plus eternal life. They're refusing to forsake it. They're holding on to something that is toxic, going to kill and destroy them and their soul if they let it and won't let it go. And it's already dead on the vine. Genesis 3 as we head this home. You know we had to go visit them, right? Verse 4. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows. See, he's putting forth lies as truth. Darkness is uh, light. And evil is good. You will not surely die. For God knows in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open. And you'll be like God. You'll have a consciousness like God, where you'll know good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for fruit, that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit, she ate. Then she turns around and gives the fruit to her husband, who's standing there saying nothing, doing nothing, and he ate of it. He compromised. In your patience, Jesus says, possess you your soul. Right? Christians have got to learn how to let God develop them with patience. Because this is where Satan is tripping up a, a lot of people in Christendom over their lack of patience. Because self has no patience, anyone who allows self to rule their heart through carnal desires, lust, won't have patience to wait on God's promises to be fulfilled in their lives. Self has no patience certainly has no patience for God. So if self is in control, you'll have no patience for God either. You won't wait God out. Look at King Saul. Samuel the prophet says, I will come back at a certain time and before you go into battle, and I will offer up an offering unto the Lord before you go into battle so that God's favor will come upon you for the battle. So Samuel's a little, little, just a little late, just a little late. Not a lot late, a little late, right? He that is coming will come and will not tarry. So Saul says, uh, Samuel's not coming. Bring me the ephod or whatever he had to do. Let me offer up offering to the Lord. And just as soon as he starts setting fire to that offering, guess who shows up? Samuel. And Samuel rebukes him because it wasn't Saul's place to offer the offering. He messed up. He blew it. Instead of waiting on God's timing, people who let self rule their hearts and lives, they will waste the time they have serving sin and will lose in the end if they don't humble themselves. Watch this. This is where Satan's getting us, y'all. God, give me this stuff, y'all. I ain't this smart. I know I'm not that smart because I use ain't a lot. <laughs> Those folks say, you're skinning your ignorance, boy. I'm being real. People had rather waste their time than wait on God to get a blessing. 
And so Satan is saying, if you want to waste your time, I've got all kinds of stuff to entertain you so you can waste your time. I dare you to go on your smartphone and look up the time you spend on your cell phone. It'll say screen time. Some of y'all fall under conviction. <laughs> See how it lines up with your prayer time. Self has no time for God. I'm almost done. Self has no time for God's word nor God's work. So believers who are controlled by self won't have any time for God, won't have any time for the Word, will not have any time for His work. That's why Jesus said in the Bible, I wondered this when I was a kid. He says, pray that there will be the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into harvest. I know we there. It's like, God, oh, where are the laborers? He says, you're there. So self won't let you have any time. So those who allow uh, for God, allow self to rule them, they won't have any time for God but they'll lose in the end if they don't repent. Adam and Eve sold out to Satan for a piece of fruit. A piece of fruit. Can you imagine that? The boy should have gone to trade school. At least if you're going to sell out. Make it worth your while. Because sin is going to destroy you for eternity. A piece of fruit, y'all. That's how deceived Christians can be. They'll trade a little bit of gratification like David with Bathsheba for the rest of their life being tormented because they opened up the door to Satan. Right? If people would only step back for just a brief moment of clarity and see just how foolish it is to pursue pleasure through their lust, they might realize it is no longer for them. It's not for them. God has so much in store and laid up for this generation of believers in reserve for us that would literally blow people's minds. This is how the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. God, God's going to stack this up, y'all. He said that the, the former reign is going to happen again, but it's going to happen at the same time as the latter reign. So that the latter and the former come together in the end. See, stuff has been held back from the body of Christ for millenniums. And God says, I'm waiting until I get the bride ready. And the bride is going to walk in her identity. She's going to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I am going to adorn my son's bride like there has never been a bride in all of eternity. And she is going to shine like the noonday sun for my son. Do you think God is going to hold back anything at all from his son Jesus who gave it all? Absolutely not. So what's he going to do? He's going to bless Jesus' bride's socks off. We're going to have an inheritance. We're going to walk in God's glory. We're going to walk under the rain while the world is under a drought. There's going to be power. There's going to be authority. There's going to be dominion. There's going to be liberty. There's going to be end time revival that millions and millions of souls are going to be, be one. And the, the bride of Christ is going to be responsible for all of this stuff, getting the harvest into the barn because she knows her hour is at hand. God is inviting people to come out and come into his glory into his goodness and to sign up for him and don't look back I thank God for the truths that are contained within this word how to walk away from a toxic relationship even though many of us today probably have never had a toxic relationship self can absolutely cause us to be poisoned by the things of this world through the lust of our eyes the lust of flesh part of life as I spoke in this word that you heard today through this word through God's spirit we're able to recognize where to look for self why it has an influence on us even as Christians that's why the Lord said if you want to follow me you must deny self as we deny self 
There will be a struggle, but thanks be to God, as a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit, and He is greater than self. And He will give you the power. He will give you the fortitude. He will give you the desire to come against self so that you can deny it, overcome it, and through that, walk in the blessings that God had me preach about today. There is so much packed into this message, but if you would love to hear it in its entirety, perhaps maybe you didn't catch the first part, please go to our website. There we have all the audio files, all of the video that you can listen to, that you can watch, and this one is right there, How to Walk Away from a Toxic Relationship. Go to our website, whcnorth.org. If you would like, we have an app from our church. You go to the app store or you can go to our website, whcnorth.org. At the top of the home page, click on download the app. You can put it on your smartphone, devices, as well as Roku. Stay connected with this ministry 24-7. We upload new ministry resources every week so that you can feed your faith and overcome this world because it is our faith in Jesus that does give us the victory over this world. And you can stay connected. There you can listen to all the messages that God gives us to share with the world. And we're so grateful that God has given us a, a TV ministry that reaches over into Asia and especially here in America. And we're grateful for that. You're a part of that. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, we'd love to hear from you. Perhaps you've watched in the past and God did a work in your life. And you'd love to share it with us. We'd love to hear it. It will encourage us. You can contact us either by phone, the information will be at the bottom of the screen, or you can email us, prayer at whcnorth.org. Let us know how God has used this ministry to sow into your life, to help you grow in the faith, and to become more Christ-like. It would excite us to hear from you. And then finally, for those that have been standing with this ministry in prayer and you know that I back everything that I teach out of God's Word with the Word of God so that your faith is not in man, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, it is in the wisdom of God, power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. If you've been watching and you know that we're a ministry of integrity, that we're here for the sole purpose of teaching and building up and up edifying the body of Christ, and you would like to take that step, we've been asking God to give us a hundred faithful covenant partners that will stand with us, hold our arms up in prayer, and will help support this ministry financially so that we can continue what God has called us to do, and that's go to the nations of the world. We've done everything that God has told us to do, and because of that, God has blessed us and opened up doors for us so that we can. You can be a part of that. Go to our website. Learn all about our ministry, our core values, our tenets of faith, the vision, and what God is doing through this ministry, whcnorth.org. And then finally, I want to encourage you. There's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot of chatter in the atmosphere of the air. But if we will set our eyes and our heart on Jesus, peace will come. And it, through that peace, God will speak in that small, still voice and you will see direction come in your life. Until this week, time next week, God bless and keep you is my prayer.